climate change is causing more and more impacts, such as floods and droughts. One of the mediating factors needed for these events to develop into conflict is a rise in food insecurity. When we have climate impacting rainfall, impacting agriculture, impacting food and food availability, the results that people will do a lot of desperate things when they have no food. And unfortunately, this includes insecurity and this includes conflict. But what is food security? The international community came to a common definition of the concept, which are the four dimensions, availability, access, utilization, and stability. Conversations about food security, they tend to focus a lot on supply and food availability and how we can make sure that there's enough food available for a growing global population. And while this is an important question to ask, this has come at the expense of the other three dimensions. Look at the access dimension, for example. A lot of people are not able to afford food, even if it's widely available. Some of the reasons for this are the high prices of food. Think of barriers to movement that came with the pandemic or when in context of conflict and war, where there are blockades. Food utilization pertains to food not being able to be utilized correctly, lacking access to water or utensils for cooking food. And another element within the utilization dimension has also to do with nutrition. So in the context of food security policies, this means guaranteeing a healthy and varied diet. And lastly, we have the stability dimension, which pertains to the other three dimensions of food security, availability, access, and utilization. So it's not really helpful if food is available in some times and not available in others, or if access to food is fluctuating. And same thing for utilization. Stability hits the nail in the head because it is the one that guarantees that all the other dimensions are put into place. How can we boost food security and adaptation to climate change in a conflict-sensitive way? What is extremely important in terms of designing food security interventions is speaking to people who are working on conflict or people in the communities to understand what the dynamics are and to kind of play out scenarios of what are the possible repercussions. What has worked in Eastern Africa, for example, encouraging communities to have water storage, such that when they have too much water, they're able to store it in tanks, for example, or they're able to build boreholes. And then when they don't have enough water, then they're able to use the water that they have instead to then irrigate their crops and still be able to be food secure. So climate smart agricultural technologies has been key. So if you're going to receive less than normal rainfall, or the climate scientists say they're going to expect less than normal rainfall. So we then encourage farmers to think about what crop are you going to plant. At this year's Berlin Climate and Security Conference, experts and practitioners looked into current debates on climate and food security and discussed solutions and ways forward. Often in policy debates, food security is still seen as a humanitarian and aid issue. And I think there is a need to move the conversation forward into a more strategic, security-related uh, environment where we really can come up with systemic solutions to what is tending to be a food system of two worlds, a food system that works mostly in the northern part of the globe and a food system that does not tend to work in the southern part of the world. We need to be uh, more strategic and more disruptive in the solutions. So empowering already those what we call disruptive seeds that uh, are already trying to avert to change the power dynamics in certain contexts. We do have the data. We can develop solutions. We can be proactive. We can be somewhat predictive. We can certainly model. We will never get resilient, sustainable agricultural and food systems if we do not think cross-sectional. The justice element has to be key. There is no argument about the need for the transition. There's a lot of anxiety that it can leave us with a more unequal world than we currently have. Approaches to advance food security must be climate sensitive, considering current and projected availability of crucial natural resources changing weather patterns and how these impact food production and overall livelihoods of affected populations. This will allow for interventions to avoid harm, be better prepared to withstand a changing climate and have a longer lasting positive impact. At the same time, 
approaches being implemented in fragile contexts must also be conflict sensitive, looking at existing grievances and conflicts, speaking with affected populations and understanding local power and conflict dynamics. This is crucial to avoid exacerbating insecurity and may even provide opportunities for food security interventions to contribute to peace.